I just like to quickly mention at the start of this video that I am now on Patreon, where from $2 a month you can help support me create more content along the lines of this video. Your support will be greatly appreciated. To find out more, why not follow the links in the video description today and find out what exclusive perks you can receive. Hey there everybody, I hope you're doing well. For today's video I thought we would start a new series which is going to look at creating game art and in this video we're going to look at pixel art tile map basics. I'm going to be creating this uh, tile map using some more modern software and a more modern system rather than the Amiga but any of the tools that you prefer using can be used instead of my suggestions here. For the main part of my pixel art in this process I choose to use Ace Sprite on my Macintosh. It's also available for Windows and Linux. I start by creating just a small uh, tile which is 16 by 16 in Ace Sprite. I can enlarge the zoom ratio just to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. And you'll find that Ace Sprite has some very good uh, grid settings. Um, by setting this you can actually set what your grid size will be, whether it's 8x8 say for something like the Game Boy, or whether it's 16x16 16 16 for something like the Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, um, or uh, the Amiga for example. Just make sure that your grid is actually shown in the view settings. You can also access this by using command or control and the apostrophe key. And just using the pencil tool, you can use some of the built-in symmetry tools in a sprite to very quickly start creating a mirrored image, essentially. Um, this will allow you to sort of create matching tiles using the symmetry tools. You have the option of just mirroring on the vertical axis, but also on the horizontal axis. And you can very quickly get some nice matching tiles working together, as you can see here. What I have here is a 16 by 16 image, which is split into an 8 by 8 uh, tile map so you'll notice that the colours that I'm using here are actually suited for the original Game Boy. So once you've actually created your tile we need to actually create something called a tile set. Now what is a tile set? Well it's just a bigger image that is going to be composed of all these tiles. So here for example I'm creating a 48 by 48 tile set or image and once we OK that we can see that we've got it there. Again my grid is actually being shown and I've actually set it to snapped grid and made sure that the grid settings match up with the size of tiles that I've been primarily creating, which is 16 by 16. I can then go back to my tile image, copy that, go back to my tile set and paste it straight in. You can see I can drag it around freely but if I hold down the Alt or the Option key on the keyboard, I can actually snap to these little uh, squares in the tile set. It's as simple as that. Once I'm actually happy with my tile set, I can then just export the image just as a ping, as that's all I need for this. A sprite will warn you about losing layers, but it doesn't actually matter in this instance. And that's all a tile set is. It's just a set of tiles on one image. Don't forget you can also increase your tile set size just by increasing your canvas by multiples of your tile size. So here I've taken it up to 96 by 96. So what if you want to create something that is not so much symmetry but actually just uh, tiles that are stitched together that you want to be seamless? For example say a brick wall or perhaps some ground or something like that, perhaps it's flagstones on the ground. In this example I can show you how by using a 16x16 16 16 graphic to start with I can use a sprite's tiled mode to actually show the matching tiles that are going to surround it. So again I just make sure that my grid is set to 16x16 16 16, and I basically set it to tile on both axes and you can see that as I'm drawing the other surrounding tiles are now automatically shown and this will allow me to basically match up the design so that everything flows nicely. I can choose perhaps just to tile on the x-axis horizontally or on the y-axis, so vertically. But using the tiled mode allows me to very quickly create a nice matching tile map so that I can be sure that my tiles are going to stitch together when placed together. Um, moving away from exact matches, I can actually create a larger graphic which is still composed of 16 by 16 tiles and here I'm actually going to draw a tree. Now you notice that I draw very deliberately. I don't just rush in and just think, oh well, it's going to be a small graphic so I don't actually need to put the detail in. You'll notice that I actually do pay a lot of time uh, putting in the details for the leaves. 
and then by basically creating copies of those leaves I can flip the images, paste them down and begin to quickly build up a tree. A little bit further on you can see that my tree is now actually beginning to take shape and I'm adding in some highlights using one of the brighter tones that's going to give this tree a bit of dimension. A little bit later on I actually extend the size of the graphic so that I can draw in the tree roots and actually some of the vines that are going to be wrapping around its actual trunk. And then continue the process of editing by basically taking out chunks of the leaf detail in the bottom left hand side of the tree just because I want to actually emphasise the shadow area there and it will actually emphasise also the highlights which you can see in the top right. Placing it down actually onto the tarmap is just as straightforward as previously shown. So to create our map proper, we need to use an application for it, and I prefer to use Tiled as it's very versatile. You first need to create a tile set from the graphic that you exported from Sprite. So here I'm just choosing that tile map here. And I just need to make sure that the tile width and height are set correctly. This is 8 by 8 pixels, because I'm creating a Game Boy game. Once I've created my actual tile set, which you can see here, I need to actually create a map from this because this alone will not make a very good level or stage. So I'll go up to File, New Map and I can set the size. In this case I want this stage to be as big as the Game Boy will support with 32 by 32 tiles with a tile size set to 8 by 8 pixels again. I then save this map and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to base this map, as I say, off of the first scenes in Inuyasha manga and also anime, based on the forest of Inuyasha. Using tiled is ever so easy. By simply choosing my tiles on the right hand side here, I can use the flood fill tool to fill in a whole area using a simple green colour. Or I could perhaps just use the stamp tool, which allow me to stamp any selection of my tiles down onto the scene. There's also a handy shape tool, so for example I can drag out a rectangle that is composed of my selected tiles on the right hand side. All these tools just make creating a tile map just so much simpler using this application. You can see how easy it is just to match up your tiles as well, so I can basically uh, take just sections of the brushes and then use other bits and pieces of the other brushes that I've created just so that everything looks seamless. This will make sure that we can keep our tiles down to a minimum and ensure that we're using memory appropriately. A little bit further on you can see that I'm finessing the details in this tile map and I'm actually pretty pleased with how this is looking just for a demonstration for you. I'm just using some of the tiles here just to soften the edges around the boundaries of the clearing in the forest where Inuash's tree is. So this is of course Inuash's forest and I just rework certain parts of it just to clean up the design essentially to make it less confusing. Now obviously on our actual device we're not going to see all of this tile map in one go but uh, it'll give you a bit of an overview. Don't forget you've also got your zoom settings in tiled just so that you can make it easier to work on certain areas if you're finding the overview just a little bit too much to see at once. You may sometimes find it easier to start out with perhaps just a piece of plain paper or maybe even some graph paper and work out your level design through that rather than going straight onto screen. At least it will allow your idea to come forwards. Maybe make some notes of what you're actually trying to achieve with this scene as well. That can also help I find. So I can now save out my tile map. Now all I have to do with this is just export it as an image, in my case a ping. So once this is exported as a ping I just make sure that the grid isn't shown in the tiled settings and it's as simple as that really. This is a graphic that our next application will be able to take in and use as part of its scenes. Now using a piece of software called GB Studio, it allows us to very easily create Game Boy games. So here I'm just adding a new scene and what I need to do is actually import that tile map that we've created in our previous step. Now by default you have no tiles or tile maps to use, so by clicking the little folder icon in the top right of GB Studio, it will open up the project folder and you can go into assets, backgrounds and drag in your scenes or your tile maps that you've created in tiled. And now immediately you'll see that you can choose your background and there's Inuyasha's Forest. I can zoom in a little bit and you can see that this is looking pretty good. 
And by dragging this little red spot here, I can actually choose where my main character is actually going to start in the tile map. Choose their direction using just the built-in sprite. By using the build button in the top right hand corner, I can actually build this actual project and see how it works within a few seconds. Okay, we can see our scene now. You can see that our built-in sprite, the arrow, is able to move around the map quite freely in all the directions that you would require to navigate the forest. And then, voila, we have made it to Inuash's tree. So this all works pretty well. Not much to do here, and you'll notice that the actual sprite can just walk straight through the tree, so we need to correct that. And we can do that very simply by using collisions. By clicking on what looks like a little Lego piece, we can actually draw out onto the tile map the zones which actually the sprite will not be able to walk through. And once we've actually put this over the well, for example, you'll see that I'm no longer able to walk over the top of the well. So moving on a bit further, you can see I'm working on the whole tile map here, making sure that the trees and any other objects which the uh, main character sprite shouldn't be able to walk through is uh, all highlighted. And then what I'm going to add is a trigger zone here. Now this will allow something to happen when the actual main character, the main sprite, hits this zone. And by using the camera movement, we can actually reveal the full extent of Inuash's tree. And once we've built the project again, we can move around the tile map. You can see that we still can't go through certain areas, so that now the character is limited as to where they can go, which is what we want them to be. And just by moving around, we'll check that we can actually get through all of the areas. And we can see here that when we get to Inuyasha's tree, the trigger occurs and it actually moves the player to see the Inuyasha's tree in full. So it kind of triggers like a story event. So what we'll be able to add in the next part is basically some sprites that suggest perhaps we'll have Inuyasha who is pinned to the tree there with his uh, spell or curse um, uh, still occurring and uh, yeah we will um, be able to build this up from there so in the next part we will look at creating a slightly more complex uh, tile map which will involve actually creating full scenes working within tile limitations and much more so thank you very much for watching, I hope you find that helpful. If you have any questions or any comments or perhaps you have your own tips, please be sure to throw them down into the comments below. And I guess that all remains for me to say is see you soon. Peace. So it's come to that part of the video where I mention that I'm on Patreon. From as little as $2 a month you can get early access to content, exclusive artwork through the post, your name mentioned on videos, as well as tips that I don't publish to the public. You can find the link in the video description below. Your subscription to my channel will also help me ensure that I can bring the latest content here from Japan. And I would just like to extend a massive thank you to my current Patreons. They are Rushi MSX, Error42, David Gaxiola, Chris Forrester, Anthony Jarvis, Phil Cobley, Pixels at Dawn, Geek Power, The Digital Orphanage, Matthew Scott, Wave Jumper, Dave Rowland, Merlin Katamari, Rob Soft, Joss Dati, Temin Amiga Retrocast, and all of my $2 Patreons. I really am so grateful for the support that you give me in helping ensure this channel can continue. Thank you and take care.